All right, it's Friday, April the 30th, the year of our Lord 2021, broadcasting from Capitol Hill here in Washington, D.C. I'm Raheem Kassam, editor-in-chief of the NationalPulse.com. And thank you for joining me today with a very special episode, a very bizarre episode indeed. And I want you all to pay extremely close attention to the conversation we're about to have and be that force multiplier to get this information out there to as many people, whether they are on your side or not. What we're about to hear, I think, I think, is yet another example of some of the most heinous behavior of the state that I've seen in a very, very long time. You combine it with what's happening to Mayor Giuliani. Remember, a FISA warrant executed on the president's lawyer during an impeachment process. This is a banana republic that is being, the United States being turned into a banana republic before our very eyes. The media likes to bang on about the persecution of political opponents where it happens all around the world. Navalny and Khashoggi, you know, all of these people lauded as heroes in the national and international press. But when it's happening here, a blind eye turned, in fact, not just that, but they give the state a leg up. They give them a helping hand. Oh, and they applaud while it all takes place. What's happening to Matt Gates? what's happening to Mayor Giuliani, and what's happened to my next guests on this podcast Paul and Marilyn, I'm going to, I should have, by the way, <laughs> before doing this, checked how the pronunciation <laughs> of the surname, Paul and Marilyn, I'm going to, I'm going to take a guess at Huper. Is it Huper? Yeah, there you go. Exactly. There you go. Paul, Marilyn, thank you so much for joining us here on the National Pulse today. I, I realize, you know, we're, we're doing this on the fly. I've just basically called you up out of nowhere and said, hey, can you come on this podcast? And you've been incredibly kind uh, to, to offer your time. I know you're business owners, you're busy people, but you're on the back of something that, that, that popped into my feed yesterday as a result of the War Room audience sending me this privately. Um, effectively, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, your 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 home and business was was raided by the FBI two days ago, who said they were looking for Nancy Pelosi's laptop. Right, that was the uh, really the long and short of their kind little visit, uh, us little old folks in in Alaska. <laughs> They're going to send federal agents all the way from D.C. and Capitol Police. Uh, officers in D.C. to come visit us. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, it turned out to be the laptop that they were looking for. I, oh, th- we were told that, that that Nancy Pelosi's laptop was not taken, or, or a laptop from that office was not taken. That was, you know, afterwards we were told all that. Now they're saying that, that they are looking for this. We'll come back to that in just a second. Let's, let's reset on this. Wednesday morning, y- y- you are out in... in you know, I, I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C., so so forgive me when I say this, but you're in the middle of nowhere, right? I, I don't mean that as a pejorative. If anything, you're lucky, right? Right, right. <laughs> you're not... Right. And, and, and you, had attended, you had attended the Stop the Steal march on January the 6th in Washington, D.C., but you weren't in the Capitol. Right. You, weren't, you, you didn't oh, enter yeah. the Capitol oh. building, and, and yet the yeah. FBI has come to your home and business and raided it, under the auspices of looking for... Talk, talk us through how Wednesday morning happened for you. Okay, so uh, 9 o'clock in the morning, uh, and I'm in my pajamas doing emails and so forth, and Marilyn's next to me. Uh, we're just getting our day up and going. I can hear some commotion out in our kitchen slash living room. And initially I thought it was my daughter who is kind of a... Uh, prankster and, and loves to kind of rile things up and get my day going, whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm like, this is this sounds like something's a little bit out of control. I got halfway down the hallway and I can hear FBI come up with your hands up. I'm like, that's definitely not my daughter's voice. That is something else. So I come around the corner only to have six or seven handguns pointed right at my face and and somebody with a deep voice barking at me to you know, please step forward, get your hands in a place I can see them. 
And uh, I'm like, okay, this this is serious. And I'm, you know, inside I'm going, okay, well, it is what it is. You know, the worst thing that's happened to me in the last, uh, oh, let's say 10 years was a speeding ticket seven miles an hour over the limit uh, probably five, six years ago. So I'm like, okay, I, my conscience is clear, I guess is the point. Right. And I had no idea this was connected to the Capitol until two hours later, plus or minus when they informed me of what their intentions were. Maryland found out sooner because of the mistaken identity that they were actually looking for Nancy Pelosi's laptop. They were up front with her about it. But meanwhile, I come around the corner and we get slapped up with uh, handcuffs and, and we had a couple of house guests and one of them turned out to be 17 years old. My best friend out of uh, Phoenix was, uh, coming up this summer, he sent his sons up early to do some work with us. And so they don't know what's going on and, uh, they don't tell us what's going on. They don't present a search warrant. Uh, they don't even imply a search warrant for the first hour while we're sitting there with handcuffs on. And, uh, they, they shipped Maryland off fairly quickly for interrogation purposes, uh, kept me in the, the dining room. And, and so I really didn't know what was up, but I was, clueless what was happening. I was wondering, okay, maybe this house guest of mine was a drug dealer or something, or right. I really had no idea what was happening. Paul, let me ask you this. Um, so so you go to the um, January the 6th rally up there at the Ellipse. Uh, I, want, I want to let the audience know that as I, as, as I yeah. saw this story last night, I've been through a lot of the information here, Paul. You understand we have to do our due diligence. We've even been through your Instagram, and, we, oh, right. I, and I have confirmed that you were yeah. uh, at the Ellipse. I've seen your videos, and I know the timestamps on those videos from, from up at the Ellipse. Yeah. Let me just ask you this question outright. You, you then walked from the Ellipse. Did you walk to the Capitol? Uh, eventually, yeah. I should make <laughs> I should make notes here just so you know if, if you're doing the time frame. Yeah, we had just flown in early, early that morning from uh, Scottsdale, Phoenix slash Scottsdale. So it was a two hour difference. I hope the FBI's forensic uh, investigation is able to realize the time frame because the time frame says everything on my iPhone. Of course, they uh, download everything off my iPhone. Mm. So I hope they with with some skill in the team, they can determine that, okay, yeah, this guy was at the Capitol for at most about a half an hour to 45 minutes, definitely not enough time to get inside. And uh, but anyway, the, the, I'll back up in my story. So, okay, mm. we are real close to the, uh, the stage where Trump was speaking, probably 50 yards away. So we're buried deep in a huge crowd of, uh, uh, you know, 500,000 million people, Hard to say. So we didn't get to leave the elliptical until the very last because the crowd was massive. And as you know, Trump didn't finish until 1.15. Okay, so we got out of the elliptical. We're taking pictures with uh, Steve Phillip from uh, Epic Time. I'm sorry, Josh Phillip from Epic Time Mm -hmm. uh, and so forth. So we're just having fun. You know, we're just like, okay, well, we're no hurry to get to the Capitol. We don't have an agenda. You know, we're just we're just there just to have our voice heard with a million other people. So uh, we finally got out of the elliptical and this time I'm guessing the earliest we got out of the elliptical was about one forty five, mm-hmm. And, uh, and of course I had to get lost. So, you know, we, we wandered around DC there around the mall for yeah. uh, 40, 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. And we finally got so hungry. Let's like, get some street hot dogs here. And uh, so we missed the whole hubbub. We missed all the commotion and, uh, you know, we finally made our way up Constitution Avenue and eventually found the Capitol. And by that time, we realized, okay, there's you no know, riot police everywhere. We understood, okay, this is more than just simply uh, a nice little protest going right. on. But like Trump said, you know, go and peacefully protest. Mm-hmm. We're like, oh, sure, we can do that. And we plan to do that anyway. Right. Well, anyway, the, the picture is just, when you, when you put, tie the time frame together, you realize, oh, okay, the picture I took, of Maryland walking up the first set of steps were about hundred yards away from the Capitol. Uh, that happened way after the breach in the Capitol, like three right. thirty PM when the you know, D C time, although my phone will say uh uh one thirty because of it, you know, it was set at uh, uh Phoenix Scottsdale mm-hmm. time frame. Uh but anyway that having been said, uh we were just there on the Capitol grounds for about a half an hour or so, took some pictures 
uh, it was really, I felt like a really celebratory time. At no time did I feel incited by the president or anybody else to make a raid on the Capitol. It wasn't even the nearest thing in my mind. Right. And, you know, we well, eventually look, heard that people on the beach. Paul, we know, yeah. we, we know, I mean, this audience knows that, that that whole shtick about Trump radicalizing people and, you know, as if they were marauding down Constitution Avenue, building pipe bombs along the way, you know, somehow <laughs> somehow traveling back in time because the actual breach of the Capitol happened before Trump right. had even finished speaking. We know that, you know, I appreciate you volunteering all that information, but I just want you to know that you're not talking, you're not talking to CNN here or the Washington Post or anything like that. So, I'm preaching to the choir. <laughs> No, we, I mean, look, we can be honest about these things because I never see a reason yeah, yeah. to be defensive and, and, and have to defend Not against clearly false, farcical claims that, you, you know, because you can't fraud time, right? You can't fraud time and time stamps and those sorts of things. You can fraud everything else. But so, okay, you yeah. went, you went, you were, you, you're, you're patriots, you went to protest against, you know, and uh, such is your right to, to peacefully protest. And, and you've, you, it's not like you've tried to hide it. The, the images are still up on your Instagram, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So, you run yeah, yeah. you run a what looks to me by the way like a very very nice business uh the homer inn and spa uh, out in out in alaska i believe it's yeah. a pretty pretty hippy dippy yeah. place am i right in saying that the the town yeah it's, it's a pretty cool place you know it's uh uh called the cosmic hamlet by the sea mm -hmm. and it is absolutely the most gorgeous place on the planet we fell in love with it 21 years ago and have never looked back never considered living anywhere else so kind of a dream life. A couple of broke kids who left Atlanta and, and ended up in Alaska and we had to make a living somehow. Raised three daughters on the beach in Alaska and uh, wasn't part of the plan. It's just part of God's sovereign hand directing us where he wanted us to go. And as I say, we do we do a lot of due diligence here uh, at the National Pulse. You know, uh, uh, we spoke we spoke briefly, but we spoke before this uh, interview. I, I you I reached out to you. You didn't reach out to me. Um, and and yeah. and I've and I've even looked into the business, and and it looks and it looks wonderful, and it looks like uh, you know just a lovely place. I'm very much into my inns and spas, so I can say that from a, oh, from a, from okay. a personal perspective. Well, right. go you know going around to all of these bed and breakfasts in England, I'm 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 very I'm very well versed in 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 that sort of world, and and so I'm okay. looking at this beautiful property of yours, and I'm hearing this hor horror story of yours, and and it it draws me back into to to you walk around that corner, you have guns pointed in your face you're being barked orders at so just put us in the room did they separate you and marilyn and marilyn jump in here by the way don't let don't let the boys dominate the conversation did they <laughs> did, did they did they separate you you know almost immediately what was the process there uh yeah after uh the initial paul was the initial contact point which i appreciate when they said come out with your hands up paul went first mm. which is always nice um <laughs> and then uh Chivalry. Yeah, chivalry <laughs> isn't dead. And uh, they cuffed him, and then I, I came out after, and they cuffed me, and then our house guests came out, and they cuffed them. Uh, and then they pretty much immediately walked me into another room. Uh, we asked, like, so what is this about? And they said, it will all become clear soon. We said, okay. Uh, and we said, you know, do you have a search warrant? And we would like to see a search warrant when I think I said, or one of us said, and they said, it'll all be clear soon. And then they just said, you know, Marilyn, come with us. Is this before and or so after they, they had volunteered the information that they were looking for Nancy Pelosi's laptop? No, that, that was before. So right. they, they didn't share that information with my husband. Yeah. Um, and they shared it with me almost as soon as we left the dining room. Did they, they take just, your laptop? At least in my and my mem remembrance is kind of surreal, and I'm not really a morning person, and they <laughs> woke me up out of bed. So in the best of my recall, yeah. and when I'm half asleep and mm. grumpy, like, can you guys come back in an hour and a half, please? I think I even said that. Mm. Um, and I said, like, they said, no one's being arrested uh, today. We just wanted to have a chat. And I think I said, well, usually people want to have a chat with us. They call and make an appointment. Right. Like, what? I don't know what this is about. And they said, it'll all be clear, Sam. So I was like, okay, fine. And they said, you know, Marilyn, we want you to come with us. And Paul, you're going to stay here. We want to have a chat with you guys. And as soon as I got into a different room, uh, to the best of my recall, it was something, because it was so out of the blue. Right. It was like so, 
something like, I, I, you probably know why we're here. And I was like, mm, yeah, no, <laughs> not at all. And they so, said, well, uh, we're looking, we're looking for Nancy Pelosi's laptop. And I was like, oh, <laughs> so it was taken and it is at large. Well, that's not a, that, conspiracy well, theory. Well that, well, well, that, well, that is a very interesting. I mean, that is a huge news story in and of itself, right? I mean, the 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 idea that the FBI is is, is flying around the country looking to recover a laptop uh, that we've been told for for weeks and weeks and weeks, months now that that was never taken. That, you know, this goes yeah, onto the pile yeah. of, of of broken narratives that have been pushed out by the by the establishment media yeah. and the law enforcement authorities ever since January the sixth occurred. But let me let me just ask you this as well. So you. Get you get separated you go you're in two different rooms at this point they're, to, they're they're actually telling you kind of two different things or at least talking to you uh differently as i as i can understand it did they was there an interrogation were, were you asked you know lots of questions what what kind of questions were you both asked um i they tried to ask me a lot of questions but since the beginning point we had a disagreement about their presumption that I was in the Capitol. There wasn't really anywhere for us to go. So they, they tried to, you know, kind of start with an assumptive close, mm. you know, Hey, we're here looking for Nancy Pelosi's laptop. We know you were there in the Capitol when it was taken. We have video footage of you. You've been positively ID. So if you cooperate, this will go a lot better for you at this point. You're only looking at a misdemeanor trespassing charge, but if you refuse to cooperate, you could be looking at obstruction of justice. And uh, hang, hang on, other they, they, criminal, threat, they other threatened you with charges. they threatened you with a misdemeanor trespassing charge, despite the fact that you weren't trespassing. Well, they weren't letting me talk yet. Right. <laughs> they were just informing me of their story. <laughs> of 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 of, so, a, of a story so that they I had was, created without without your input. Without my input, no, there, there's like, you know, and I said, do you, what, whatever makes you think I was in the Capitol? Like, where did that idea come from? Right. And they said, well, we have footage of you in the Capitol. I was like, that's not possible. Like, I missed the whole party. I was lost at the other end of the mall. Um, <laughs> how can you have footage of me in the Capitol? Well, well, t- so. tell us, how does that moment feel when, when somebody with a badge and a gun is standing over you and you're in handcuffs and you're separated from your husband and somebody is telling you that they have footage of you? You know, this is, this is a, we're moving into a world of, of deep fake photography and videography and Correct. we've seen the lies that yeah. they're willing to perpetuate in order to, to have prosecutions and to, and, to, mm-hmm. and to put heads on pikes, right? So how does it, I mean, are yeah. you panicking in that moment? Um, you know, I think I wasn't really panicking. I was trying to, I'm very uh, analytical. Mm. And so my analytical brain was like trying to put the discordant pieces together. And also I had kind of made a decision after watching the 30 hours of live footage of uh, election misconduct Mm. from the the people testifying in the different states that like, wow, you know, none of us, none of this is real and none of us is safe. So I need to just adjust to that new reality. And so I think I had already mentally prepared myself that we live in an, in a fake, like you said, like a banana Republic, like this is a fake nation. And so I already kind of submitted myself to like, wow, anything can happen to any of us anytime because there, this is all staged and we're just like, along for the ride or if you know in the matrix context we're like the batteries you right, know right. we're just the thing that keeps the machine going uh that, that, so that I is think, a very and i think that, go ahead oh i think um there's also you never know how you're going to feel in a situation right. there's there was some kind of a like a supernatural bubble over us because both paul and i just i could hear him laughing in the other room too we're just like really this is what you're going to roll with this Really, you're going to go with this? Like, no, no, no. this is the thing you're doing this now here. Well, so and 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 you and guys was, and you guys clearly have a, a a a very good listen a very good sense of humor. You have a very good sense of humor about it. I'll ask you about that okay. in just a second. But but you know this is very recent. Let me ask you while while you still may have some memories fresh in in your minds about this. What was when you were when you were sort of treating this with um 
I, I guess levity or at least at least uh, c- confounded with what was going on uh, how, what was the what was the demeanor of the of the of the law enforcement of the FBI officers in the room were they were they laughing with you were they sympathetic towards your demeanor were they hostile no no. Separate parties going on. Yeah, Paul had a whole different group, and they were drawing it up and hanging out with him. Mm. And then I had the the two agents, you know, that were assigned to interrogate the supposed intruder who was part of the the uh, absconding of said laptop and part of some whatever inner sting right. that may or may not be going on. The other thing that I realized. Uh, even talking with an attorney, you know, attorneys are reaching out to us and we're just asking questions like, when they say something, is that true? And he, he said, no, they're free to tell you lies. They don't have to tell you the truth. So wow. in that vein, I have no idea if Nancy Pelosi's laptop is that large or was that just a ruse? No clue. Or, or, is so in one of the, or is in one of their cars that they've pulled up in and they're going to find it on your that, premises. Act, 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 absolutely. So they showed me a photo and this place said like, well, you know, excuse me, I would like to see a search warrant. And they kept saying, yeah, you'll, you'll, there's one, you'll get to see it. I was like, well, I'd actually like to see it now. Mm-hmm. And I'd also like to see, you know, like some ID from you, you guys. I've been to Mexico. Uh, not everybody who has a badge is actually a, a, a legal officer. Right. <laughs> and... <laughs> So I'm like, I have no idea who you guys are. I have no idea why you're here. And I need to see some proof that you're allowed to do what you're doing right now. Um, so they did flash their badges at me. They wouldn't let me look at them. Uh, and they were and FBI badges? I, I don't know. They didn't even look, let me look at it long enough to see. Did they have Did they have FBI jackets on? Yes. Okay. And but I, you know, you can you can order those on Amazon. Oh, I've got so twenty. I don't know. Um, and what? Um, wh- wh- how many of them were there? There were two in with me, mm. and they were very insistent that their story was true. One of the agents uh, was like, uh, she said, "Well, uh, you know, I personally presented this evidence to the judge in in Anchorage, mm. and got his, you know, approval for the search warrant. That we have very good cause, and we have." you know, positive ID proof where I'm, I'm a hundred, you know, we're a hundred percent sure that this is you. Wow. And so I said like, so am I supposed to change my memories to match your wishes here? Wait, wait, because- ma- ma- Marilyn, <laughs> wait a minute, hang on. So they're saying they've got a picture of some woman inside the Capitol and I've seen this picture, and we're going to obviously put it up on mm-hmm. the website when we put this story up, and I've seen this picture. Yep. They've, they've got this woman inside the Capitol that they are saying is you. Marilyn, was it you? But they never showed, they never showed me her picture. Right. They just told me that they had, they just told me they had footage and proof positive that it was me, and I asked to see the footage. They showed me one very distant, pixely shot of a silhouette that of somebody who had nappy brown hair like I have mm-hmm. and a black Columbia style coat like I have. Mm-hmm. And that was the only thing they would show me. And that, that of all of the photos I've seen, that's the only one that would ever make me think that it might be someone trying to look like me inside of the Capitol. And that's what I asked them. They said, well, here you are in the Capitol and here's this person next to you. We need for you to tell us who this person is. And I was like, wait, I need you to tell me why there's somebody in the Capitol pictured here that looks like my hair and my coat. Like, why am I pictured in the Capitol when I never went in the Capitol? But it's and, um, but but the clothes were different, right? The the, the jumper. The, well, the, 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 I mean, all I was all I was seeing was brown right. hair and a black coat, like I I was wearing, you know, similar to what I was wearing. Right. So they never presented anything until the very end that had any facial potential to facially recognize and as soon as they showed like the photo that that i posted from there mm. uh i picked the one that was from their fbi website which was the one they had shown me eventually because they were looking for the clothing they said where is the shirt you were wearing i was like is that who you think i am that, like i'm standing right here <laughs> no it's it's it marilyn and it's pretty I amazing took the, i took the uh-huh no no go ahead no oh, i took the picture and i said Look at look at this printout and look at me. I'm sitting right here. Right. 
can we agree this is not the same person? And they just grabbed it away and went back to the searching. I'm like, okay. Uh, it would have been really helpful if you'd showed me that at the beginning. And we could have both conclusively gone, oh, oops, wrong house. Sorry, our bad. We're out. So it all made me feel like because they were so non uh, upfront about what information they did have, right. it felt very much like either A, they were embarrassed that they had found the wrong house and wanted to go ahead and execute their search warrant right. once they saw me, or B, they knew it wasn't me to start with, but they wanted an excuse to search and seize a patriot's private information. So I don't know which it is, or plant or plant information and then come back and accuse me later i have no idea <laughs> so so you there was there was probably what uh, do you think a dozen total people on on your property at, the, at this point in time well we, we don't know because mm. we're sequestered and we're only allowed to see what they allow us to see right. and of course i'm wondering like i had there's a bunch of people running around here from an agency that has a lot of history of planting and creating evidence who's watching them while they're moving about my house. Are they planting stuff that they're now going to find and go like, yes, here it is, you right. know? Right. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, so I mean, wouldn't let us follow them. I imagine, I imagine you have, um, you know, you, you, you were probably second amendment, you exercises of your second amendment. Did they, did they ever ask to see weapons, anything like that? No, they did it. The, the warrant, once we were able to read it and mm. they did allow us, a copy, which mm. is, you know, nice, thanks, <laughs> uh, said that they were allowed to in, uh, look into any areas that might contain a stolen laptop or any other stolen materials from the Capitol right. from January 6th. So they were able really to explore our, and they reported back to us about some of the things they found, like, hey, notice you got one of these. <laughs> we're like, okay, thanks. Well, and okay, fine. So look, now now this whole process, I mean, uh, ludicrous as it, as it clearly is on the face of it, you talk about how different you look. I'm, I'm looking at the two pictures right now. You look totally different from the woman in these pictures. You know, there are, there are identifying features as earlobes and things like that that are very clearly different between these two pictures. I think you've pointed that out yourself over the last 24 hours as well um, on, on, your, on, your, on your Facebook post about this. So you're sitting there. How long are you guys sitting there for in total? But, you know, handcuffed and, and effectively detained. Well, I was not. I was unhandcuffed okay. immediately. Um, once I was removed from the room, apparently Paul and the guys were left handcuffed for about an hour, hour and a half until they finally decided they would, for unknown reasons to any of us, that it was they were going to unhandcuff them and, and I guess start informing Paul, mm. is that correct, yeah. about what, showing him pictures and asking him, do you recognize this person, do you recognize this person type of thing. Uh, but I, I apparently they wanted to vet me first and see where I was at. Um, I don't know. Who knows? But does anybody know what's going on with any of these agencies? <laughs> I mean, I, we're, try, I have we're, no try, we're trying. We're trying. We're <laughs> trying. Um, Marilyn, let me let me let, let me bring Paul back into the conversation on this one as well. You bet. And Paul, you know, I I noticed in some of the some of the other interviews that you've done, some of the the. Um, there's 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 a lot more to this than than even what we're able to cover, and I know you know I don't want to I don't wanna steal too much of your time. You're business owners, and you're you got busy day ahead of you. Um, but there are things that really strike me as super weird, like that they said they came by earlier and knocked, and nobody responded, right. and then they came back later and just broke the door down. Yeah, they they told us. Oh, well, they actually informed Marilyn that they had. Got in here at seven o'clock in the morning, knocked on the door, and uh, there was no answer. Uh, and so they decided to go out for breakfast. I'm like, okay, well, that's that's good. You got to eat at some point. <laughs> you know, your mom said, "Go get your breakfast." Go get your Wheaties. So they they headed off and came back at nine, only to find out that because we didn't answer, because we're, we're our bedroom is in the back uh, part of the house here, mm. we couldn't hear exactly what was going on in the commotion. Uh, until we're hearing FBI come out with your hands up. So they went from being here, going out for breakfast, coming back and smashing through our door with guns ablazing, facing right at us, or at me at least uh, initially. That's all I saw were barrels pointed right down my 
my my face and and so forth. So yeah, it was pretty surreal. Let me let me tell you they, something. They, <laughs> they did a, they did actually some of the agents did actually point out to me a couple of times like, hey, we usually just bust the door down. We don't even usually knock. So we mm. knock. Nobody answered. Oh, well. We went to breakfast. Th- we came back. We knocked again. <laughs> Thank we rang you the so doorbell. much. Nobody yeah. Answered. What do they want? A, yeah, pro- a, a medal? Then, yeah, but, but I but I kind of thought about that later, and I mm. thought, you know, they were behaving because honestly, the we were treated pretty. They kept telling us how decently they were treating us compared to how they usually treat people. So oh, hold on. Did you get? Did you? Did you? Were you allowed to make any phone calls? Did you get to call a lawyer? No. Right. No. Well, that's not that's not treating you well, then, is it? I mean, that's yeah. But, yeah. Good point. Yeah, it's not. No, they but they kept kind of reminding us, like, hey, we could be a lot more. Oh, so so effectively, they were threatening right you. Yeah, I mean, effectively, they were they were trying, they were intimidating. Either either that, or they were amazed that they were behaving out of character. So <laughs> my 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 kind of synopsis of it was like, well, we're in such like you were looking at the website. It's such a serene like peaceful space that we cultivate here. Like we intentionally cultivate like peace and, and relaxation and harmony and goodwill and positive energy. And I don't know if maybe they were coming up the door. They're like, yeah, we can't use our usual tactics here. Cause like, this is like holy ground. We're like destroying the vibe. So <laughs> I don't know, but they were quite congenial when they weren't threatening us. So you well, know, and it's a, it's a it's a it's a retreat, right? It's a spa. It's a spa, right? Yeah, so do you, you have other do yeah. you have other customers on site at this point? Are they seeing what's going down? Yes, we did have a couple of guests, and wow. thankfully, one of the the one that was most impacted directly, that was most aware of what was going on, uh, are friends of ours, and so they were just kind of like, "Well, we're going to just." Boogie off site. We know Paul and Marilyn are good people. We don't know what's going on, but we're just going to give them space. And they'll fill us in later. So that was nice because it didn't, we didn't, you know, we're always worried about it. In, anything impeding our guest experience, I guess, you know? <laughs> no, I mean, you know, that would uh, all, all, you know, I think. I mean, I'm stunned at, you, at, at how how well you're taking this, frankly, because I, you know, I just I wouldn't. But again, maybe that's something to do with the the serene nature of your surroundings and and the life, you know, the very clearly beautiful life you've built for yourselves. Um, and I've been looking at the reviews for your for your, you know, it's the Homer Inn and Spa, just in case any of the audience finds themselves out that side of the world. Um, and I've been looking at the reviews for it, and everybody sings your praises, your personal praises, the two of you. They were so welcoming, they were so kind, you know, all of this. And I've been reading this over the course of, uh, you know, yesterday evening and this morning as I've been trying to piece this story together, and it just does not compute what the FBI did to you, what they did to your property. Um, let me ask you this. Uh, did, they, did they install a new door? <laughs> to, to replace the one they broke well i they did c- have somebody come out and patch it like within half an hour and we actually want to contact them and find out how they did that because we can never find help <laughs> that. Yeah, i'm we serious know who your contractors I'm, are <laughs> i'm absolutely serious we want to find like who was it that they found that was but actually responded and came and did something that because, is strange you know otherwise we were going to duct tape it so we were appreciative of that and yeah. And one of the agents actually said that they would replace the door and apologize. I mean, some of their behavior was out of character. And then other agents would be like, no, we're not doing that. We don't do that. And they're like, okay. So they were kind of disagreeing among each other how to behave with us. And in response to how we're handling it so uh, convivially, I think how you handle things, you can traumatize yourself after an experience yeah. by how you recount it. Yeah. Um, and we decided in the experience, we both independently decided that we weren't going to allow ourselves to be traumatized. And I think we've just made that decision in life in general. So I think our, my speaking for myself, and I think Paul as well, our feeling is that the best revenge when people try to come, what does the scripture say? They heap coals of kindness on your enemies and bless those who, you know, persecute you and abuse you. We're like, hey, you know, they were asking us for where we should go eat. They were we were having chit chats at the end when they were done with all their stuff. And uh, I think wow. being that if we as individuals don't lose sight that we're it's actually a government of us 
by us and for us. They have forgotten that. And that, I believe, is largely our fault because we've forgotten who we are and we need to stand as who we are. And I largely got that from the D.C. rallies. There were a million of the most gracious people I've ever been in proximity to. And the energy was so full of, like, restraint and respect um, that I was like, wow, these are amazing human beings that are Americans. Marilyn, I totally agree. And there's agree. millions of us. I walked there's that morning. Of us. I had to walk down from Capitol Hill down Constitution Avenue, um, uh, walk across the town to my studio. Um, you know, the, 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 it's it, and, and oh, the whole way, the whole way, I just had the the most wonderful, friendliest, lovely, God fearing oh, people yeah. coming up to me, shaking hands, hugging, taking selfies. Yeah. Of, there wasn't a sense of animosity in the air. There wasn't a sense no, of mean spiritedness. There no. wasn't a sense, and and we can all no. agree, right, that there were there were clearly some troublemakers from whence they came and for whom they were working. We don't know yet. Right? right, but but yeah, there were clearly some troublemakers, right. and some trouble was clearly done. You obviously were not a part of it. And I'm very sorry that you've had to you've had to endure some some backlash from the state as a result. But uh, I think your attitude, your love for your country, you shine through. Maybe this has happened for a reason, so that you could reach a bigger audience with with that message you just gave us, Marilyn, which is one of hope and one of patriotism. And 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 I thank yeah. you so much for, for for being here with us today. Yeah, I really believe there's eight million votes that were actually counted for Trump that weren't given away or thrown away. So that means there's even more than that. 80 million, sorry, 80 million. Uh, And if, if each of us could just stand in our spot with grace and authority, I really think the, uh, the authorities that are out of control will have to stand down eventually because there's just too many of us Mm. and they have to be reminded and, well, and this is what this comes to down to, isn't it? Things. These 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 yeah. raids that we're seeing, this this uh, extrajudicial activity with Mayor Giuliani and all of this. I mean, this is this is a wounded animal lashing out, is it not? I mean, you look at Biden's numbers, you look at the numbers on YouTube, the dislikes, you look at how many people bothered to watch his joint address, you look at all of the evidence that's stacking up against them everywhere, and it feels like you know they are lashing out right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think it is interesting of the items that were uh, that they told us they took. Mm. Who knows what they really took? But uh, were electronics, and then one other item: the Declaration of Independence. Wait, what? <laughs> right. I had a little handheld, you know, little hand booklet, booklet Declaration yeah. of Independence floating around somewhere. Yeah. I think that I had dug out of some boxes from back home schooling back in the day. Yeah. So I was like, wow, I wonder if we ever read this. Like, I'm feeling guilty now for my lack of homeschooling. Like, civic class was pretty shallow. Wasn't including all of the realities that are apparent now. And I'm like, you know, I should really read this document. I never got to because they took it. I don't... So, so they took, well, they yeah, took your they phone? Yeah, they declared it on the search one. They took a phone, they took a laptop, and they took the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, which felt a little symbolic to me. Like, well, it sounds like huh. they're heckling you. It sounds like a heckle. It sounds like they do that. On, they, they've done that on purpose as a, as a, as a means by yeah. which to leave a leave a message. Yeah, yeah. It feels like that. Feels like the yeah. Patriots are now. Um, uh, if you if you have any documents in your home that intimate you might be educating yourself about our political system. You're obviously an enemy of the state. <laughs> yeah, about about your rights and about where your rights came from, and you know, yeah. gosh, we could talk all yeah. day. Uh, Marilyn and Paul, you 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 guys are an inspiration. Honestly, you are, and um, you yeah, know, I'm sure, you. I'm sure, I'm sure we'll speak a lot more. I, I want to stay in yeah. touch with you guys and and have you back. Well, on. if I could encourage anyone based on what they chose to remove from our home, buy as many. Uh, documents as you can of our founding documents and start reading them because we're all really lazy citizens. I don't know what's in it. I don't know what they say. I'm not studied up. And that's my job. If I'm, if I'm supposed to be oversight for the, our government that's poor me and by me, just like I'm a business owner, I need to know my business so I can direct my people. I'm not educated enough to direct 
the legislature because I'm a lazy citizen. Right. So we all need to become unlazy citizens and we have to get involved in the process. I agree. I agree. I agree. I, I feel that way myself all the time. I, you know, I subscribe to the Claremont Review of Books, which is a very intelligent magazine that comes every quarter because, because I think to myself, okay, this is written by people who know about the founding and they know what the, you know, what the founders wanted to, to, the, the nation to be like. And they, they have all these references in it. And the, and the CRB, you know, it comes every quarter and I put it on my coffee table. And it sits there, and it sits there, and it sits there. And eventually right. I have to force myself, right, to sit, Raheem, sit down and learn something today instead of talking all the time. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. I hear you. It's amazing. Yep. It's amazing. Well, look, I know it's early It's early doors for you guys out there in Alaska. Go ahead with, with the rest of your day. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll be in touch. I'll send you this. Uh, I'll send you a link to this as soon as it's up. We want to, you know, we'll, we'll have a story up on the National Pulse. We want to get you on the war room soon as well, guys. This is this has been, you know, an extreme pleasure for me to talk to some people who are, who are you know, obviously stoic about the attacks uh, that, that, that you have endured in the last 48 hours of your life, and uh, and I think everybody can take hope from, from yeah. your attitude towards yeah. that. Yeah, and and part of us sharing the story is because we don't know if this attack is over. Right. So right. we don't know if, if we're going to, you know, if there's what the next step is. We don't know if the next step is like, oh, yeah, we're done with whatever our intention was, whether spurious or real, or, or if there's an ongoing agenda that we're going to continue to get pulled into some web that we're for whatever reason, especially chosen to be part of. I don't know. Right. So, no, that's right. That's so right. Part of it is just vigilance. We need eyes on. We need eyes on, and citizens need to be sharing their stories because we need eyes on because that's accountability. I completely agree. And, you know, maybe they'll have follow up questions. Maybe they'll ask you about that that seditious document that they had to confiscate from you, the Declaration of Independence. Exactly. How dare you? How exactly. dare you? <laughs> Marilyn and Paul. Uh, listen, give a plug. Give a plug for your for your business. I want to send some business your way. Oh, wonderful here, Paul. Uh, here's well, we're honored. Uh, yeah, first of all, Homer is the most amazing city in America. Just incredible beauty that's so hard to soak in. And we were fortunate enough to be able to buy our place back in uh, 2000 for, you know, pennies on the dollar compared to what it's worth today. Homer's gotten discovered as one of the great Americans tourist destination so i really don't want to plug our place i'd rather plug where we live yeah we've got a beautiful place we've put heart and soul into it very artistic our view is mind-blowing at the edge of the ocean but really homer is what the uh, the story's about here with amazing culture amazing food amazing people a mix of you know, ultra conservative, ultra liberal. Uh, <laughs> the most part, we love each other in the community. It's it's really a dreamy place to live. Amazing. And our place is actually very small, and we typically, in high season, are at like ninety nine percent occupancy. Mm -hmm. So, if people are interested in coming to Homer because it's the most beautiful spot and has amazing food and art and culture and human beings. Uh, in scenery and wildlife they should just come regardless of whether we have any space or not and if they're patriots just like come by bring bring your declaration of independence <laughs> bring a declaration of independence we're, we're taking collections before they're all confiscated no you know what's amazing you know what's amazing you need to do this now you need to have a wall where people can bring you copies of the declaration and you oh. frame them and put them on a full wall. you you gotta do that now Okay, this is going to be the oh, new thing. Oh, that then. sounds amazing. I love it. <laughs> All right. Paul, Marilyn, we'll speak soon. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Okay. Sounds good. Good Cheers. to meet you all. Well, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Wow. Okay. Was that or was that not incredible? I'm not going anywhere. Stick around. That's not the end music. That's the rejoin music. Because I want to do a little bit of a recap with you, ladies and gentlemen, after that. Okay, now let me tell you how this works. Because you, if you're listening to this, actually, I don't know. Maybe you know the National Pulse. Maybe you don't. Maybe this, maybe this podcast will, will, will metastasize, given the ex incredibly important subject matter. And the incredibly compelling characters of um, Paul and Marilyn Huber. And since they were two... Um, 
just too nice to, to plug their own business, just too humble to plug their own business. Let me give you that again. It's the Homer Inn and Spa in Homer, Alaska. Um, and, and you should, in fact, in fact, you can go online and find out the address. Even if you don't have the intention of going to the Homer Inn and Spa, maybe you could mail them a, a, a copy of the Declaration of Independence. Maybe this is going to be a way that we communicate camaraderie with one another. I don't know. I'm just I'm 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 speaking off the cuff here, and maybe maybe that's a horrible and cringy idea, but I I like it. Um, what did we just hear? What did we hear? I mean, I I, I thank the audience because, and I f- I'm very sorry that I forget who actually sent me this, but I got so engrossed in the story when I first got sent it yesterday that I forgot who actually first sent it to me. So whoever you are out there, thank you for bringing this to my my attention. Thank you to bring this for bringing this to to our attention. Natalie Winters is currently working on a write-up of what actually happened. We'll have this podcast up. We want you to be a forcing function here to make sure that people hear about this. Make sure, hey, Mr. State Senator, Mr. Senator, Mrs. Congresswoman, please listen to this podcast. Read about what's just happened and ask tough questions of law enforcement, of the FBI, of the regional office, all of these people. Why were they doing what they were doing to these people when it's so clearly the photographs, and you'll see the photographs, they're going to be in our story, when it's so clear that this isn't Marilyn inside the Capitol? Why are they doing this to people? I mean, we all know why they're doing this to people. This is a, an intentional effort to uh, intimidate, to force Trump supporters into, into silence, into little holes. Shut up. Don't talk. Don't express your political preferences. We're taking your declaration of independence. But more people need to know about this. So please help me, help us, Help the Hupers, help your country, share this around. And I'm just so grateful for all of you guys out there who have already supported us, who have joined us. You know, we, the National Pulse, it's it's a, it's a small news outlet. We do the best we can. I've been working on this story all night, overnight, um, all morning. Natalie's been working on it, getting all the details we could. She did an incredible job getting through to the Hupers. They jumped on the phone with me immediately. You could hear them, right? They weren't. They weren't cagey. They didn't have any set lines. This isn't legal talk. These are two honest Americans. And the state is attempting to persecute them. Or has persecuted them. For nothing. It's amazing. So help our work. Help our investigations. This is how this whole thing works. Go to fundrealnews.com. Honestly, you could drop me five bucks. It would help. Fundrealnews.com. And some of the names quickly of the people that have joined us recently. I just want to read a few off here. William, Kevin, Justin, Andrew, Robert, Stephanie, Gregory, Lynn, Douglas, Stacy, Martin, Linda, Arthur, Ronald, Marvin, Dennis, Dan, Susan, Carolyn, John. Honestly, you guys are heroes to me. Fundrealnews.com. You can head over to thenationalpulse.com. And I'll see you after the weekend with more information on this, believe me. And we're working on a whole bunch of other stories also. More Chinese Communist Party influence here in Washington, D.C. More stories from all around the country. Mike McCormick's working with us on some real interesting Ukraine stuff as it pertains to what's going on with Mayor Giuliani. By the way, the Matt Gates stuff. We didn't even get to that today. New big bombshell story drops in the Daily Beast. What's that bombshell story? It's all the same stuff, just repackaged allegations no accusers nobody on the record it's been a month now oh make sure you go to that rally down there in the villages with gates and and taylor green by the way you can find more information at mattgates.com slash rally i think all right i'll see you monday cheers